We did. Can I ask one? Sure. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, we've had some briefings recently about the CASA and Dr. Ginger, and and I guess there there may be some slowdown with the um, with the appointment of the POB. Is that off the city attorney? I mean, how are we doing with our um, appointments, and and could we be doing better? And does that affect the CASA? Uh, Madam Pre President Pena, Councilor Harris, uh, the. You're correct that the council had on the agenda tonight the one of the replacements for the position that had been vacant since September 2018. Uh, our understanding from our meetings when during the site visit were that this uh, individual has opted not to move forward. Um, so this will leave the count the agency, the police oversight board, with three vacancies uh, in September 20. Uh, I'm sorry, in February of 2020. Currently, there are two vacancies. One, the, the vacancy that this uh, Mr. Garcia was supposed to take, and then one of the board members resigned. So, to stress that we did meet with the, each of the counselors last week, or as many as we, as we were able to. Um, Dr. Ginger, in the, the current monitoring report in paragraph 271, stresses the importance of uh, accelerating the selection process and ensuring that the council has a proper vetting process in place. I do want to commend that the council staff, uh, Director Yada, uh, Deputy Director Melendez, and uh, Julian Moya have been working very hard on filling these vacancies, as has, as has the council. Uh, but we do want to stress the importance of this because as it currently stands, the agency is, or uh, not the agency, the board is not in operational compliance, and those vacancies do need to be filled. Okay, thank you very much. And one thing I kind of, um, I, I acquiesced to it when it happened, but uh, Still wasn't happy at the time. I'm still not happy that they, the the legislation took the power away from individual counselors to appoint by district, and I, I want to raise that again because I think that would be something that would have accountability, because people could look at me and say, "Why haven't you appointed?" People could look at Councillor Davis and say, "Why haven't you appointed?" But now it's a bureaucratic sort of a a process, and I think that uh, process has kind of uh, caused some delay. I don't know if the staff wants to. Um, to address that or not. Yes, Madam President, Councillor Harris. So, yes, we have been working with the legal department and the CPOA to uh, determine some suitable candidates to take those vacant positions. Um, we have four names um, currently submitted uh, to our vetting process, which includes um, meeting with individual counselors and then, of course, meeting with members of the CPOA board to determine um, what type of job it entails and um, kind of get there, kind of get familiar with the process. So we have submitted some names and they're currently going through uh, vetting. So hopefully we can make those appointments very soon. Okay, and the follow-up question is, um, what's the ETA, what does very soon mean? So, Madam President, Councilor Harris, we're kind of at the mercy of the vetting process itself. So we, we try to get these candidates in front of at least two or three counselors. Um, that is always difficult to, to uh, arrange. And then, of course, they have to wait for the next CPOA board meeting so that they can attend one and see, uh, uh, kind of observe what's going on. So hopefully by the end of December, after their December meeting, we might have two candidates we can appoint. Okay, thank you. 